Let's talk some Rick, 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 Rick and Morty, season seven. It's the bestest. I like Rick and Morty. Rick, 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 Rick and Morty. So we're going to talk Rick and Morty season seven. We're going to do a full season review and decide how great how Dan Harmon is. He is the, the greatest. smartestest, the bestestest. He didn't need no Royland. He Rick don't need Morty. no Royland to keep him running. Rick and Morty is solely Dan Harmon's baby. He is the mastermind. He is. He's the, the one story train. He's going to run a train. He's the conductor, and he's keeping it on its tracks. If he was in charge of Snowpiercer, I think it would still be going. <laughs> Just putting it out there. Well, why don't we talk about the season as a whole? butthole and then we'll look at the screen rant ra ratings of the episodes and kind of decide where we look at it my overall impression of the season is that they played it safe and the the one thing i did like is they they let some of their insecurities out like they let the audience know that they're insecure but i don't know if that was intentional do you think it was intentional uh i mean dan Harmon is a weak little bitch so my impression was they're afraid of losing their audience because you have to remember Dan Harmon was fired from Community, which was his creation. And just like Justin Roiland was fired from his creation, you too can be fired from your creation. So I think there's a lot of insecurity going on with Dan Harmon, especially around this Rick and Morty thing where he wants to ride out these last two seasons and hopefully get renewed for another big fat contract. He just wants the money. He's like a lineman in the NFL who's trying to write out that contract, but he's got to produce a little bit because otherwise he's not going to get that big fat contract. He's going to get put on a year to year contract and nobody wants that. And then put out the pasture, right? He's going to get that NFL minimum. Yeah. Don't want that. So as I, as I looked at it, it just seemed like the self loathing and the insecurity came through and I'll point it out in episode to episode as we roll through this, but let's take a look at where Screen Rant has it. We need the darker episodes. That's where it's at. Yeah, but you need some light episodes to balance the dark episodes. The darkness. The darkness. So Dang we'll Batman. start at number 10. Number 10. Oh, God. This one was the rise of the super fucking stupid. This is 10. This is the worst one. Numericons. Yes, because it took back old characters that we don't need to see. Think about this. How awesome are Mr. Meeseeks? Yeah, Mr. Where, me six, look at me. Every poopy butthole, like literally everyone is better than. Like then, everyone uh, is better than this. Then Wooder T. Uh, what is uh, what's uh, oh, bitch, Scary Terry. Scary Where's Scary Terry? Terry? Well, see, that's what I think is cool about the first couple seasons is they had all these characters, and they didn't repeat them, and they didn't necessarily need arcs. And this season smelled of desperation to me, and they're like, we're gonna bring back all these old things you. You like the Get Swifty episode? You thought that was a good episode? We're gonna have an episode with the new Americans. That's what it felt like to me. Where they had to bring them back and it was just lame. There was like an okay Ewok episode or uh, ep uh, not episode, but um, joke. The Alpha Betriums. Like that was such, that was the joke of, it, of the Alpha Numericons or whatever they're called is that they're um they're the b-side to get swifty they're not even the b-side they're like the c-side of get swifty so weak weak episode i kind of agree with this uh rick and how poopy got his poop back i did not like this episode i didn't think it was funny don't i don't even remember it that's the one with hugh jackman no, oh, where he like references his wife or makes a joke about his yeah, wife. Yeah, I just I thought that was the only funny part of it, and I I didn't like it. I didn't get it. That's it made me feel right. uncomfortable. Yeah, the yeah. whole predator joke, which could have oh, been funny. Oh, that's but right. Not the, the separate because it started with poopy butthole and ended with poopy butthole. Technically, yes. Okay. The season did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a, it was an okay episode. It was all right. They're gonna make Mr. Poopy Butthole a villain, I guess. Uh, but I don't like Mr. Poopy Butthole. You don't need to bring him back this many times. And Hugh Jackman was just weird and out of place. Yeah. Uh, number eight. Wet Kuat Amortican. Uh, I actually, I kind of like this one. 
the Quato episode. Open your mind. Open your mind. Yeah, I didn't mind it. I thought this was kind of fun. Open your mind. I think my Quato Morty's pretty good. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this. This was. I thought it was a solid episode, and it. You know, I like summer in short bursts, and this was a good summer episode. Um, I would put it up higher than this one for sure. I don't know where, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep bumping it up until I, I meet one that I don't like. Th this one is pretty weak. The the Jerick trap where it's Jerry and Rick combine into one oh, person. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah, I this feel was like terrible. Is it worse than the Hugh Jackman one? It, uh, yes. Yep. This is. It's this not is, worse than Numericons. Uh, no. This is probably number nine. Okay, and the summer one is better. Yes. Than this. Yeah, yeah, no. Quato Open, one yeah, with Quato yeah. inside of a no, Quato. This is Quato. easily yeah, this is this is a terrible episode. And you never you never saw that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Um I saw the Colin Farrell movie. Oh total, it was a total, total recall, recall record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Total recall. Total recall. Yeah, this this was dumb. That was dumb. This one was good, I liked. The Rick Fending Your Mort? Yep, I like that one. I like that one a lot. I when, thought that was one of the best. Um, what do they call that? Interstellar cable or interdimensional cable? Yeah, yeah. It's one of the best interdimensional cables. I don't remember a ton about it, but I liked it. I, I remember the rock funny. sex part because yeah. I filmed the short for it. Yes, they but I liked their... that episode, and I think it's definitely in the. I would probably put that in the, like the top five ish. Yeah, I yeah that was good. It was a one off episode. It was yeah, good. maybe like maybe like three or four. See, that was a good one that wasn't dark. It was just a yeah. lighthearted, fun episode. Yeah, it's a standalone. I like some standalones. Episode three is number five, Air Force Wong. I kind of like this episode, but it wasn't very funny, and they didn't use Dr. Wong that well. Dr. Wong, I love Susan Sarandon as Dr. Wong. And, of course, think about it. They brought back two things. Pickle Rick episode, and they brought back the episode of uh, Trent, not Trent, Unity. Yeah, Unity part Th was stupid. This seems like a real desperate episode. Like, oh, here's more key jangling. Here's things you like. You like Unity episode. That's a. I like the original Unity episode, where Rick's like, can you, can you make yourself, um. Can you chant my name? Can you make yourself into 10,000 versions of my dad? Right? Yeah. He says, and he's like, he wants to fly into the stadium. Yeah. To have I, sex with her. I like, I like president. I like the, I, I like Keith David. Yeah. I like Susan Sarandon. Unity. I'm not sure. Sure. I like that's that big jumbly girl. Yeah. From that weird. Show. I like the, the, the best president episode was the Turkey one where they what? got turned into turkeys. I like the one where he gets shrunk, where they get shrunken down, where he wears the shrunken t-shirt. He has the tiny t-shirt on. Uh, he has to do the negotiations. Nah, the turkey one was better. Yeah. So let's get, uh, Mort Ragnarick. That was pretty good. Yes. I like that one with the Bigfoots and the Pope. I thought that was good. Pope. Yes. Yeah, it was, I, I enjoyed that. And Bigfoot was cool. It was a standalone too. Kind of felt sad at the end where Bigfoot was like, oh, I want to be with you guys. And they're like, go. <laughs> Harry and the Hendersons Let's fucking ending. Fucking go. Yeah. That's the ending of the Harry and the Hendersons movie where they throw rocks at him to make him go away. Wait, who, they, at Harry? Yes. At a person? No, he's a Bigfoot. It's literally, it's, um, who's the guy from Third Wait, Rock they make the friends Sun? with Bigfoot? John yes. Lithgow? John Lithgow's in a movie back in the 80s. It's, and it's a, um, oh my gosh. Uh, who's the guy who did like not Frank Oz but who's the guy who does all the puppets and the Muppets uh, Jim Henson Jim Henson Studios did a movie called Harry and the Hendersons where it's Harry who is a Bigfoot and it's amazing it's one of the best um, live action puppet things you've ever seen because it's a full size giant Bigfoot with the face and the whole thing and at the very end spoiler alert um, in order to get rid of Bigfoot because he lives with them uh, they have to throw rocks at him, and they like start crying. It's the exact same ending. What? But like, was he being nice to them? Yeah, he wanted to stay with them, and they're like, "No, you have to go live with your other Bigfoots. Ah, get away from us, Big." It's the same exact. Oh, that's thing. a fucked up ending. Yes, it was awesome. Was it was it a great movie. That's messed up. 
Yes, you should watch. It's classic. No, I don't want to. It seems sad. Watch it on our Patreon. It seems sad. Our reaction to it. But I liked it. Standalone. Good one. This could be the best one. This was fucked up. Is this where he goes after uh, Rick Prime? Rick Prime. Rick, they find... I, and the, it's not so much Rick Prime that I liked. I like Evil Morty. Evil Morty is one of my favorite characters of all time. He was kind of cool. Kind of cool. He's he, like, I, have, I don't have time for this, Rick. He was pretty cool. You guys are just in my way. Like, he's just... He's so... He's cooler than Rick. Yeah. You don't think Evil Morty I still don't know why than... he's not Rick Prime, though. I thought he was always Rick Prime. The Rick... Rick 236 that we've been watching. I thought he was like the Rickest Rick or whatever. He says he's the Rickest Rick, but he's not. Rick Prime is is the... Rick Prime... So there's two... So you, do you know how the lore works? No. Or you forget? There's Rick... Rick Prime and Rick 236 are probably the two closest. Because Rick Prime says, I gave you the technology to go through portals. And none of the other Ricks had discovered that. The other Ricks are all very smart, but none of them had discovered portal travel until Rick Prime gave it to all of them. And the first one he gave it to was 236 when he killed his wife. Yeah. And um, because remember, they got into a fight. They got into an argument over whether or not he should time travel. And but Rick Prime's Morty is evil Morty who he abandoned. Oh, wait, that's that's evil. That really? I think so. Yeah. Is that confirmed, though? Because oh. then I feel like Evil Morty would have wanted to kill him more. No, remember he says, hi, Grandpa. Just, it's good to see you again, Grandpa, or something like that. Does he? Yeah, I think he does. Because you got to remember, even Morty's not the original 236 Morty, I don't think. Uh... Remember, Morty's from, like, the... Remember they, they Cronenberg everybody? Oh. Yeah, it's hard. Rick is not... Morty isn't even with his original family. I know he, that. They all got I remember that. Yeah. So Rick invaded that world. Like 236 invaded Morty's world. And then Morty invaded, had to invade another world. Yeah. It's all. It's, it's hard all to keep track of. Yes. This is a good episode though. And then what? The second episode? This episode? No, no, no. Four? The, the, <laughs> the evil Rick one was good. Yeah. Very good. And, and then this one was real fucked up. Yes, that's a morte. I like this. This is the dark, the dark, dark episode. Probably the darkest episode of the season. I like this one a lot. And this one was, to me, this is where the writers showed their insecurity because they're like, "You like those dark episodes? It's just like the, it's just like the previous one where they're like, you didn't like how he resolved Evil Morty, like because remember in the previous season they resolved Evil Morty by him leaving the Infinite Rick verse. Yeah, and they're like, oh, you. You, you want to keep watching you don't like our original stories you don't like that we resolve that story line that we're gonna have we're gonna bring them back so they brought them back right they brought back evil morty yeah and that's desperation to me same with this this was like you like dark episodes we're gonna give you the dark what's the darkest thing you can think of cannibalism let's do it you know what i mean it just it's it's it oozed insecurity to me but i like it because i like it when people who are, are, are creatives are uneasy when they're co not comfortable. When you're a, a multimillionaire, you're no longer comfortable. You no longer make anything interesting. What has Mark Zuckerberg done since he's been a, a millionaire or billionaire? Make the metaverse. Yeah, which is a complete failure. Make what is what has Jeff Bezos done? Make a yacht. And tear apart bridges. In Amsterdam. Yes. So that was a very good episode, though. I liked That's a Morte. I did. Fear No More is... That's no, they're that was the one. episode that, that I like it was good, but I would take those other two episodes above it. I would too, because the reason why I don't think it's good is because none of it was real. I hate episodes like I that. I still don't know what was and what wasn't real in it. None of it was real. There's uh, only two things that are real in the entire thing. The very beginning. Uh, no, what's yes. The very, very opening is real, which was amusing. But you know what? The only thing that you take from that episode that was real is that Morty's biggest fear is that he'll be replaced by somebody else. Yeah. That's his biggest fear, right? That Rick Which can is just replace him with anybody. Yeah. And that Rick is too scared to go in the hole. Those are the only two things you need to know. 
Rick is too scared to go in the hole? Yeah, he, he doesn't go into... The, I know he doesn't go the into the hole, but I don't know that he was too scared to go in. There's no... He doesn't think he could get out. That would be my... He thinks he would never get out, is my guess. Because he doesn't... How can he outsmart himself if he's the smartest person in the universe? That's what he has to do, is outsmart himself. How's no, he going to do no, that? No, he has to overcome his fear. That's not... Yeah, but he's afraid. He knows what his biggest fear is, and he doesn't think he can overcome it. It's oh. probably being alone, would be my guess. Probably. So I don't think he he want, he doesn't want to face that existential threat. So the last which means he's grown as a character. Old Rick from season one would have jumped in in a heartbeat. This new Rick has changed, and I think that's what they're trying to show you is that Rick has changed. As much as Rick hasn't changed, he has changed because more uh, unity even says you've changed and i think that's the theme of the season is that and think about it, this is how meta the show got by that episode because this episode showed me they're the, how insecure the show was because they're afraid of being canceled they ain't getting canceled what the hell else cartoon network got nothing but they ain't making any money and they're warner having brothers, a rick and morty anime coming out warner brothers is about dude that costs zero dollars warner brothers is about to get what either buy or sell themselves to paramount yeah, I don't know. Warner Brothers is not doing great. That's the point, is that they don't have any money left, right? Warner Brothers owns Max, yes? Yes. Okay, so they're floundering. You think they have more money to waste on a failed Rick and Morty? I mean... I think that I don't think the ratings were good. For the whole season? I think so. I, I don't... Obviously, just ending ended, so I don't have any confirmation. I don't know. I mean, it's not... It's getting another season. Like, it's not getting canceled. Well, they have a, they're contractually obligated to two more seasons, but mm. that doesn't mean they have to finish them. That's what I mean. They could pay and not do them. I would say this was the third best episode. So my point is, is the writers were so insecure that they wrote this whole thing because they're like, ooh, look, Diane is back. But Diane, that's only Morty's percep perception of what Diane would be. That's not who Diane is. Yeah. Because that's not really Diane. It's just yeah, well, It was Morty's nightmare thing. Not Yeah. 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 So it had nothing to do with Rick. And then does Morty actually overcome his... Uh, he gets out, right? He does. Okay. Because he took his picture. Yeah. Yeah. Morty got out. But then you're always going to think, did they ever get out of the hole? That's what I'm saying. Like, are they always in an alternate reality now? No, because only one person could go in the hole. That's the rule. Yes, but how do you know that they got out how it's just like everything else it's like well how do you know they're which rick is rick 236 yeah or you don't it's all, it's all the uncertainty yeah you don't and, and i thought it was a good season finale i don't think it was the best but what it indicatively told me is that the writing staff is guess what all those plum marvel jobs are gone right the the woman who wrote pickle rick went to marvel did she hulk does she sound like she's having a good time right now Jeff Loveness, who also worked for Rick and Morty, just got fired from Marvel. Did and, he really? Yes. Remember, he was going to write Kang Dynasty? Oh, boy. There ain't no Kangs no mo. Yeah. So I think that all these writers that were sucking on um, Dan Harmon's teat are all scared that they thought they'd get bigger jobs, but they're not going to. And do you think they're going to win any Emmys anytime soon? Did any of these episodes make you think like, oh, this is a Pickle Rick episode? No, probably not. No. Although I do think that they were more creative in these past episodes than they've been in like four seasons. And that's because of the fear. I like the fear. I can feast on their fear. Need the darkness. I have pain to show you. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It, was a, it was a pretty good season. So let's, okay, let's just really quickly, we'll sum this up. Uh, Fear No More, good episode, yes? Yep. That's a more take, good episode. Yep. Unmort Rickon, good episode. Yep. Uh, Mork Ragnarok, good episode. Yep. Air Force Wong? Decent. Good? Average. Does it go on the list or not? Mm, it's average. No? Okay. Yes. Yes. Rick Fenning, your work. Five. Okay. So at least five good ones. No. No. So that's not good. So five. That yes. I seven. like this one. So, okay. That's six. 
And then... No, no I didn't like that one. No. And the Numericons is terrible. So that's six out of ten were good. Yeah. So that's good. And then, like, two were all right. So there was two really bad ones, I think. Yes. And we looked at the Rotten Tomatoes. Had The audience had it at 44%. I'm sure that's a lot of Justin Roiland resentment. So... Um, I think they got their mojo back, and the voice actors doesn't even mean anything to me at this point. Yeah, uh, yeah, I stopped. I stopped even noticing. I, I totally stopped noticing. So they did a good job. So uh, yeah, if you hung out with us this long, let us know in the in the comments below. Are we totally off our rockers? We had six out of ten good episodes. How many did you have? Five out of ten? Four out of ten? You let us know. I know a lot of people didn't like this season, but we're trying to be optimistic, and we're trying to find anything to enjoy at this point. So let us know in the comments below. Give us a like, subscribe, share this. It definitely helps us grow the channel, as they say. In the meantime, catch our podcast. It is on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all those great places and more. It's totally free. You can also come hang out with us. We stream it live here, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday nights. You'll enjoy it. We enjoy it. You just missed us give away a bunch of stuff for trees, man. If you had a tree, we just gave you gift cards and, and did we though? pops that you don't like. Did we, though? I don't know. Find out. But as for all of us here at Our Reviews, we'll kill you to all of y'all at home. We love all y'all. But we are on to the next one. Mm -hmm.